Green Bay Packers coach Matt LaFleur was asked questions he thought would be better directed toward Aaron Rodgers. I'm Robin Lundberg here with senior writer Albert Breer, and that's, of course, you know, um, in light of Rodgers being asked in the past, Albert, about being vaccinated and saying he was immunized. We now know he was is not vaccinated. He is going to miss at least this weekend's game. And, and there's questions about, you know, whether all the protocol was followed here and, and if the NFL is going to have something to say. Right, and I think there's certainly questions about what happened during the preseason, um, for one, like in that he was an inactive player for, for the preseason games and he's standing on the sideline unmasked. There's also the question about his press conferences. And I've been in that auditorium in Green Bay. He wasn't wearing a mask for any of them. And, you know, clearly that was in an effort to hide the fact that he was unvaccinated. So there are a lot of unanswered questions here. I think the other thing that's interesting to at least look at is the amount of effort that it took for people to keep this quiet, you know, and that um, that the players in the building, that the coaches, like they all know, like, you know, I think one thing that's become pretty clear to everybody um, over the last few months is when a player is unvaccinated, people who are inside the building day to day who are working with these guys know it because there are obvious tells. Um, the most obvious one, of course, being whether or not they're wearing a mask. If you're indoors, you're required to wear a mask. Um, if you're unvaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear one. So, um, yeah, I think there's certainly some questions here. Um, you can see the loyalty to Rodgers and that everybody was able to keep this quiet for as long as they did. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that the, 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 the next set of questions is absolutely linking to the league's protocols and whether or not Rodgers followed them. Do you see any, you know, impact for the, the Packers long term this season? Or is this simply, you know, a blip in the radar story that's going to become a bigger deal because of the drama that already existed with Rodgers and the Packers, but that actually won't have any impact on, you know, let's say the Packers yeah, chances of winning the I think the team's the actually done a pretty good job of, of, of managing the distraction that, 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 that Rodgers created over the course of the spring and into the summer. Um, and the fact that they were able to sort of manage that, compartmentalize it, they lose their opener um, in pretty stunning fashion to a Saints team that was starting Jameis Winston for the first time and come back, that, come back from that and win seven in a row and win games different ways, and I think speaks to the program Matt LaFleur has built there, um, the job Brian Gutekunst has done building the roster up, and then you know, how LaFleur and Rodgers have managed this pro- this, this, the, the distraction over the course of the last three months. This is something new. So, you know, how they handle this going forward, a lot of people who don't want to be asked the question are going to be asked the question over the next few days. Um, It's going to weigh on guys, and obviously, you know, not having Aaron out there is going to have an effect on um, on how they play um, on Sunday night. And so that's going to be interesting. It's just to see how they come out of this one. But they have handled distractions, you know, um, quite a few times over the course of this calendar year, and so they should be ready for that part of it. The second piece of it, Robin, which is you know the bigger picture piece of it is, how does Jordan Love look in a real game situation? We haven't been able to see that yet. And so seeing him in the context of a regular season game is going to provide valuable, valuable information for the Green Bay Packers. It's also going to provide valuable information for the rest of the league. So regardless of whether or not Aaron Rodgers is on the roster in 2022, how Love plays could play into how the Packers handle their quarterback situation if Rodgers is gone. And then, you know, if they find a way to, to, to extend Rodgers after this year, it certainly could affect the way other teams look at Jordan Love potentially as a trade target. And, you know, it's valuable information for me because I want to see the guy play. It's funny that this could be, you know, Rodgers is doing that opens up a little bit of an opportunity and for that, Love. Like this, this is where the Packers were with Matt Flynn. Um, you know, when Aaron Rodgers was out in 2011, Matt Flynn made a lot of money based on one game. Um, he played against the New England Patriots on a Sunday night back in 2011. And so that's the way these things work sometimes is, you know, other teams look at a player and say, this guy's got a lot of promise. And then he goes out and he kills it in a single regular season game can have a big effect on the way teams look at a player. Obviously, the Packers have more information than anybody else. This is going to give other teams a good chance to look at who Jordan Love is.